if you're looking to make a radial progress circle bar like this for your game that can update, you should continue watching this tutorial. Greetings! It's Maxo Diddly. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can do a circle radial fill effect in Unity. So let's get right into it. So my setup is, I have two buttons and I have a script attached to the buttons and these are going to be used to test for radial fill. So the first step is we need to make our circles. So this is for a UI canvas, so we're going to right click on our canvas, go to UI and then go to image. And all you'll need for this tutorial is a circle sprite. I'll include a circle sprite in the description below if you want to use it. However, the circle is of a low quality. The higher quality the circle, the better the effect will look. And on our UI image that we create, we're going to drag and drop the sprite to be a circle. And we're going to call it Radial Fill. And we're going to make the circle semi-transparent black to have a nice effect. And after that, we're then going to right click on the circle we made in the hierarchy and go to UI and go to image to make an image that's a child of our radial fill parent. And this will also have the sprite be our circle. And we're going to make the color green, a bit like the stamina bar from some open world games. And now we're going to go to the image type and we're going to change it to be filled. It's going to be radial 360 and we're going to do the fill origin from the top, but you can change it to be from other directions. And if we just mess about with this fill amount, we can already preview what the radial fill will look like, which is great. This is exactly what we want and it looks really smooth. You can also change if it's clockwise or not, which is a nice touch. So now we just want to give this a name. I'll call this fill and then we're going to save our work. And the next step is to make a script to control this radial fill. So you can right click, go to create, then go to C sharp script and then call it something like radial fill manager. I've already made the script, so we're going to open it up. So firstly, we're going to do serialize field image radial fill image. And this is going to be the image that we made that we set to have filled mode. And then float fill duration is going to be how long will one fill action take? And float fill duration is going to be how long will one fill action take? And then private coroutine fill coroutine equals null. This is going to store the current fill coroutine because we don't want to have multiple fill coroutines occurring at the same time. So this is a way to protect us from that. And then we're going to do a function. Public void update radial progress circle. Int value to fill. Int max fill. Float target amount equals float. Value to fill plus one divided by max fill. And then we could do if fill coroutine is not equal null. Then we stop the coroutine. And then we do fill coroutine equals start coroutine. Animate fill target fill amount. This is going to be the function we call in other areas of our game to basically control this radial progress circle. And float target fill amount equals float value to fill plus one divided by max fill. This is going to calculate the full percentage as a fraction and add in one to ensure it reaches the next step. And this is our entire coroutine. So let's break it down. So we're going to do private enumerator animate fill float target fill amount. So it's a coroutine and we're gonna pass in how much we want to fill our radial progress by. Let's break it down. We're going to do private enumerator animate fill float target fill amount. And then we do float initial fill amount equals radial fill image dot fill amount. So here we're going to store the current fill amount of the radial progress circle. And then we do float elapsed time equals zero because we're going to be initializing the timer to track the animation's progress. Then we can do while elapsed time is less than fill duration, we're going to be looping until the total animation duration has passed. So we do inside here, we can do elapsed time plus equals time dot delta time to increase the elapsed time by the time that has passed since the last frame. And then we could do radio fill image dot fill amount equals math f dot lerp initial fill amount target fill amount elapsed time divided by fill duration. And this is just going to gradually fill the amount using linear interpolation, which is our lerp function based on the elapsed time. So it's going to fill our radial circle to the target amount in the fill duration length, 
which in our case is one second. And then we do yield return null, which is going to be wait until the next frame to continue the animation. And then we could do radio fill image dot fill amount equals target fill amount. And this is just going to ensure that the fill amount is precisely set to the target value at the end of the animation, in case it's like 0.1 f off or something. And then we do fill coroutine equals null to clear the reference to the coroutine because it's finished. We don't need it anymore. And that's all the code we need. And here's an example I've got here on how we can use it. So I've got two functions, increase fill and decrease fill. I've got some integers up here, a reference and a reference to our radio fill manager. So I've got 20 rounds as the maximum and the current round is zero. I can increase the round count and pass in the values into the update radial progress circle. We pass in the current round and the maximum round. The current round is what we want to fill it to and the maximum round is the maximum amount of rounds. We're doing the exact same thing for decrease fill. And we've got some if statements to, to protect our function because we don't want a negative fill amount or a fill amount that goes beyond the full circle. And we don't want a fill amount that exceeds the maximum amount it can fill to. But this is a little example on how we can call our functions. But this is the code, which will be in the description below. And so we're going to save our work and go back into Unity. I've hooked up the functions to the buttons and the canvas has the increase round script and I need to drag and drop the radial fill manager into it. And to do that, I need to put the radial fill manager script onto our radial fill parent. And then I need to drag and drop a reference to the radial fill image, which is our fill image here, into the radial fill image field. And with that, I can then go to my increase round script, drag and drop that in. And then I'm going to go to the radial fill and I'm going to set the fill to be equal to zero because our current round is set to zero. So it makes sense to have them in sync on start. And so I'm going to increase. I'm going to increase again. I'll increase again. As you can see, it's working. I can decrease. I can increase on the fly. I can spam increase and it'll fill up a little quicker because... It's got more distance to go in the same amount of time. But as you can see, the radial fill is fully working. And you can hook this up to other functions in your codes. Like maybe this is an oxygen bar for swimming underwater. Or maybe it's a stamina meter. And you can hook up that function to wherever you need to call it. So thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. And subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.